out to be too good to be true. The person who seems so nice is really not so nice after all, once you get to know them. The person who seems to have the perfect family has all kinds of skeletons in their closet. And once you visit them, you find that they really weren't perfect at all. And those of us who don't do all of what we used to do before we met Christ might begin to think that we're living a perfectly holy life until some of those old temptations rear their ugly heads and we find ourselves sinking back into the sin that can so easily beset us. And then we find out that we're not such a perfect follower of Christ after all. Our reality constantly reveals to us that there are very few things in this world that are perfect. And the Bible speaks to this lack of per perfection that we see in the world. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 7 and 18, For I know that in me, in my flesh, lies no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And he says later in verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul acknowledges the war that goes on in his flesh that keeps him from oftentimes being the perfect and holy being that God designed him to be. Paul acknowledges that the road to destruction is paved with good intentions, good thoughts, and good plans, but it's not always so easy to execute everything that we've planned. So, if much of our lives is surrounded by that which is imperfect, and if try as we might, very few of us will ever be able to achieve full perfection, and if it is true that Jesus Christ was the only perfect one, then why are we talking about perfection? Why would we even concern ourselves with that which is perfect if we can never be perfect? Well, brothers and sisters, that's a good question. And I'm glad you asked it. <laughs> Romans 3 and 23, chapter 3, verse 23, is a familiar verse that says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And because of our sin, we are not perfect. We were separated from God because of our sin. But the message of the gospel is that Jesus, the one who was without sin, died. He died for the propitiation of our sins. He died to cover our sins with his perfect blood so that we could be reconciled unto the Father God, brought back together with God. It's kind of like somebody going in and standing up for you because you can't uh, have what, or you don't have what it takes to go in somewhere. Jesus went in to God and vouched for us and used his holiness, his righteousness, and his perfection to cover you and me. And that is why it's so important that we understand what God requires of us who have been brought back into fellowship with him through Jesus Christ. God requires that we walk a walk like Jesus did while Jesus was present on earth. Jesus touched the people. Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. Jesus forgave and he loved people right where they were. Jesus called people to himself, no matter who they were and what they had done. Jesus talked and Jesus even cried for the people. And Jesus did something that we can all do. Jesus prayed to the Father for the people that they might be one as he and the Father are one. Jesus is our example of how we can have a perfect life in God when we line up with the perfect life he led while he walked among us on earth. You see, it's because of Jesus that we can get in on a perfection in God that could never be ours apart from God. Yes, the Bible says in Isaiah 64 and 6, but we are all as an unclean thing 